Have you ever heard of Mark Levinson before? Well, I wouldn't fault you if you haven't. They are more well known for their amps, preamps, and such, and these are actually the brand's first ever headphones. And they're actually quite possibly the most expensive wireless headphones on the market right now. Hey guys, we have the Mark Levinson number 5909 headphones with us today, and they are expensive with a capital E. These come in at 999 US dollars or 1,499 Singapore dollars, which honestly is kind of insane. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So let's talk design first. These come in three colors: pearl black, ice pewter, and radiant red. We have the black with us today, which honestly is the most understated. And I really do like the radiant red because I feel like it would go very well with the red stitching on the headband. Anyway, you get very plush ear cups that are replaceable, so plus point there. A good amount of padding on the headband and all metal construction for the yokes. That being said, the ear cups themselves are made with plastic, which is a bit of a letdown for the price this commands. Nonetheless, the headphones still look very premium and they feel great in the hand as well. On the left ear cup, you get two buttons, one for power, one for A and C. On the right, you get the buttons for volume control as well as play pause. There's also a USB-C port here, and something special about these headphones is that there's a USB DAC mode, which allows you to use the headphones wired with your laptop or whatever, and that's great. Comfort-wise, these are incredibly comfortable, no doubt thanks to the plush ear pads. I can wear these for hours on end without the slightest bit of discomfort. The ear cups are also quite big. I never noticed my ears touching the insides of the ear pads, and it was deep enough that my ears didn't touch the mesh inside either. The ear cups are also able to swirl flat, which is a very nice touch. That being said, the carrying case that comes included is still quite large, but you get two cables, one USB-C to 3.5mm, one USB-C to C, a flight adapter, a one quarter inch adapter, and a USB-C to A adapter in the package. Inside, you get 40mm beryllium coated drivers that the brand claims is tuned to the Harman curve. I'm not going to question that because, you know, Mark Levinson is owned by Harman and the headphones do sound great. Moving on, there is a Mark Levinson headphones companion app, although it's quite bare bones. You get a battery indicator on the main page, and in the settings page, you can toggle between A and C or awareness, adjust the base contour, set an auto off timer, and toggle on head detection on or off. And that's about it. As for connectivity, these are on Bluetooth 5.1, which isn't all that great when it comes to future proofing, but at least connection is solid. What's nice though is that these support SBC, AAC, APTX adaptive, and LDAC. So if your source device supports LDAC, audio files will be able to stream high res audio. There's supposed to be 30 hours in the headphones with ANC on and 34 hours with ANC off. And I do have to say that I charged these exactly once since I got them and I have never needed to charge them again. As for the ANC, it works pretty well. It's not on the same level as, you know, the Sony WH-1000XM4 and other top tier ANC headphones, but these do well enough to block out really almost everything and I wouldn't mind having these on a flight. Microphone quality is pretty okay too. I'll say that they're perfectly fine to take work calls with and in quieter environments, they work great. But we now come to sound quality and I really enjoy listening to music with these. Keep in mind that I'm testing with MQA files off Tidal and streaming through LDAC so your experience will definitely vary. It's generally a more neutral sound that picks up a bit in the upper mids with a slight emphasis on the vocals, and it's incredibly detailed with a very good amount of clarity and coherence. The bass is thumpy and impactful, and if you want more, you can always use the bass contour feature, but I personally left it at neutral. The mids are smooth, and you get a bit more sparkle in the highs, which I definitely enjoy. The best part about these headphones though is the staging and instrument accuracy. The soundstage is wider than average, and the instrument imaging is on point, with plenty of space in between and beautifully separated instrumentals. Plugging these in and using a wired connection brings it up a notch, of course, and with a 32 ohm impedance, these are easily driven with pretty much any laptop or phone. Anyway, here's a quick sound test for you guys, but like always, I really do recommend going down in person to try out audio products.
Are these worth the exorbitant price tag? It really depends. I would say that it's honestly a bit too much to swallow for most people. A thousand bucks is a lot, and not a lot of people would be willing to drop that kind of money on a pair of headphones. For those who are willing though, you'll be rewarded with some beautiful sounding headphones that look pretty nice and have really decent ANC. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Mark Levinson number 5909 headphones. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. Till next one, see you guys!